Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple. That's your no shit gaming news video. Three news stories in one video with zero faff. Cyberpunk's launch was a disaster. We all know that very well by now. But the bosses and execs would have you believe that they had no idea quite how bad things were going to be. According to newly shared internal videos, that was, unsurprisingly, a load of total crap. Several videos popped up on sites like 4chan and then were shared to Reddit and recent era depicting some serious bugs in the game, many of which will surely look familiar to those of you who are playing on launch day. Supposedly, these videos were obtained during the recent hack CD Projekt faced back in February. This led to internal data and documents, as well as source code for Cyberpunk and The Witcher being leaked and sold to the highest bidder. It is believed that these videos were created by members of the QA team to highlight the numerous issues the game was having just months before launch. This montage of bugs was named Cyber El Bugadoo 2020 and clearly paints the issues the game has, and yet nothing was done to stop this busted ass product being sold to people. The actual devs themselves will have had no control over that, all responsibility lays at the executive's feet. It is impossible to verify exactly when these videos were created, so they may have come from much earlier in development when bugs were more prevalent, but the 2020 timestamp is being thrown around a lot, suggesting that it was at least within the final year of production. A link to a Reddit post with all the bugs can be found below, and some of them are quite NSFW, so be warned. The bugs range from small visual quirks to full-on catastrophic physics failures. What makes these videos even better is that they're not just raw footage of bugs. Whoever created them took the time to edit them to add music and juxtapose the promo material with how the game actually played. From reading various discussions around this, videos like this are not uncommon on dev teams where the QA department will put together a kind of montage to show what needs to be fixed. There is a reason the public doesn't get to see this stuff and that's because it's very jarring and causes knee-jerk reactions. Adding in the music and far from subtle jabs at promo material makes things seem a little more bitter and not just bug reporting, but based on the multiple discussions of crunch culture at the studio, a bit of bitterness isn't exactly a shock. Personally, I'm not really bothered by the bugs in this video because this is QA doing their job properly, albeit with a little tongue-in-cheek fun sprinkled on top. Bugs happen in games, that comes with the territory. Some will always sneak through QA because the dev team just doesn't always have time to get to them all. But when your boss and co-founder Marcin Avinsky says, our testing did not show a big part of the issues, we're all gonna call bullshit on that one, mate. That's the problem with all this, not the videos themselves or the presence of bugs, the fact that they said that they didn't know. They just lied. Clearly, QA made it known that these issues were present and regardless of when these clips were created, many of these issues still remained at launch. Simply put, this video shows that they knew about some of the very worst bugs and still didn't do anything about it and then lied saying that they didn't even know. CD Projekt always marketed itself as the company of games first, money second, but clearly with this project they ended up beholden to the investors rather than the actual players, which resulted in this whole mess. Speaking of CD Projekt's investors, one of them is throwing the company well and truly under the bus. Or is it a Cybertruck? I'm not sure. UK-based group Ambry Advisors, which Bloomberg describes as activist investors in this case, said they are in utter dismay and disbelief with developments at the company over the last 12 months. Watching the investors turn on them is the best betrayal in gaming history. These guys caused the problem by forcing the game to be released and now have the audacity to complain about it. But to be fair, CD Projekt misled consumers, so it stands to reason that they misled some of the shareholders too. CEO of Abri Advisors Jeffrey Terman also said, I don't think you could have intentionally tried to make so many mistakes as these guys have made. It's really shocking. Tierman is even calling for the removal of CD Projekt's key board members Adam Kaczynski and Marcin Novinsky. This is the most fun I've had with a cyberpunk story for ages because I get to laugh at all the bugs again, but I also get to laugh at the investors getting all pissy about a problem they helped cause. A problem that contributed to the company earning 60% less income according to analyst estimates. In true cyberpunk fashions, the corpos are eating each other, so now we just need the nomads and street kids of the industry to step up and show them how it's done. And next up, Capcom has had a bit of a resurgence recently. It's been knocking out of the park with most of its major titles like Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Monster Hunter Rise, and most recently Resident Evil Village. However, with such success and notoriety, comes more eyes and potentially more problems. One artist filed a complaint against the company in a court in Connecticut on Friday, alleging that Capcom used photos from her own copyrighted work. Designer Judy A. Jurassic is presumably not a dinosaur and is the creator of Surfaces, a collection of 1,200 photos for the purpose of visual research for artists, architects, and designers. They're not the kind of photos you hang up on your wall, they're more for reference when creating another piece of art. The book originally released in 1996, which came with a CD-ROM housing the image Images, and Jurassic claims that the use of these images must be licensed by her, accusing Capcom of not doing that. One example is used in the logo for Resident Evil 4, one of Capcom's most popular and successful titles. The logo itself is fine in terms
terms of its shape and design. However, an image of broken glass texture is composited on top of the number 4, which Jurassic argues is her work. It is a fairly minor inclusion, but it's hard to argue that they don't look similar, and since it is a photograph of a real piece of shattered glass in Italy, it's remarkably unlikely that Capcom would have captured the exact same spot in the exact same way. The lawsuit argues it is hard to imagine that Jurassic would take a photo of shattered glass in Italy and interior mansion door design, and that Capcom artists would reproduce the exact same pattern of shattered glass in a logo and interior design without benefit of Jurassic's photographs. If it was just one image, then it could probably be forgiven, but there are several examples of similar uses by Capcom without Jurassic's permission or license. I'm cycling through images on screen now, but there are loads more in the lawsuit documents. The documents submitted to court span over 100 pages, with more than 200 examples of where Capcom supposedly appropriated her work. Taking things further, at least one of the images shares a file name between Jurassic's version and Capcom's. Some of the images are of textures and materials, but some are photos of existing art, like sculptures, which obviously Jurassic doesn't own, but she can argue she owns the exact photo used to influence Capcom's work. Even though the images of things like cracked windows or brickwork may not be products or objects she created, Jurassic still owns the image depicting them, and if she can prove that they took one, that will set a precedent for the rest of the case. Capcom was also under fire recently for supposedly copying designs from Dutch filmmaker Richard Raphorst and his monster designs in Frankenstein's Army. Unfortunately, several times the lawsuit points to something called Devil May Care, not Devil May Cry, which is Capcom's excellent genre-defining hack and slash series, which isn't exactly professional. Though I doubt this will have any bearing on the lawsuit's success or failure, and I'm just being petty. Most of the art that has been supposedly used without license is fairly inconsequential background detail and textures that most wouldn't notice, but that still doesn't give Capcom the right to use the assets without permission. Pulling some of the same real-world assets as reference is one thing, but pulling a book's worth of stuff and using it as your own is pretty damn shady. Jurassic's lawyers are asking for up to $12 million in damages for copyright infringement and is also looking for between $2,500 and $25,000 for each photograph used, of which there are about 80 used across different games and locations. The full court document is linked below if you want to look through some of the images, and it does make a very good case for each image, and remember, there are 80 of them. Some are so specific yet minor that I'm amazed anyone spotted them. At first you see it and you think, oh come on, that's just the ground, but then you see Capcom's version next to Jurassic's and it becomes pretty clear cut. If it was just a couple of instances, I'd probably just write this off as harmless, but the amount of assets used and reused is pretty staggering, all just from her book. Clearly, that is no accident, and they wholesale ripped her off. And finally, after a slow week of new releases for last week, FIFA 2021 has retaken the top spot on the UK physical game sales charts. It rose up from number 8 all the way to number 1 due to some deals putting the game below 15 quid, causing a 59% boost in box sales. Animal Crossing then took number 2 up from 6th, maintaining pretty much non-stop momentum since its launch over a year ago. Last week's number 2 was Biomutant by Experiment 101 and THQ Nordic, but unfortunately this week it fell down to 16th after an 80% drop in physical sales. Mario Kart 8 also saw a decent bump from 7th to 3rd, and Minecraft Switch hopped up from 11th to 7th as Nintendo's dominance of the physical space continues. Miitopia and Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury filled in the bottom of the pack as each maintained 9th and 10th respectively from week to week. Resident Evil Village continues to perform well, though it did fall down from 5th to 4th, forcing Assassin's Creed Valhalla to settle for 6th. Sony's representation has held after increasing last week, though to less success with Spider-Man Miles Morales occupying 4th after 1st last week, and The Last of Us Part 2 taking 8th from 3rd. Next week is expected to be a big week for Sony, with the launch of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart this Friday, so that'll probably take the top spot for a week or two. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash prettygoodgaming. I've been Henry Cooper. That's all for today. Bye for now.